What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Crew Mode, it's episode number 3, great run of form for Bournemouth, our best so far in our first 12 games, 3 wins in 4, no losses in 4 and up to a season high 8th in the table, about a third way through the season today, uh, we're going to get through the rest of sloggy season and get through to the January transfer window opening, so we might see some business today and we'll probably end up around here with the FA Cup third round or maybe Liverpool at home as well, so loads to get through today as we reach the January window starting off with a trip to Bramwell Lane to take on Sheffield United away aiming for our fourth win in five games come on you cherries so 14 minutes in still tied at 0-0 Sinister has just gone down as play continues and Johnny Burkhart makes it 1-0 and the blade strike first but this will be typical man great win against Newcastle United great point at the Etihad Stadium but now a loss away against a struggling Sheffield United at Bramwell Lane that will be typical Sinister with an injury as well during that passage of play and if we're going to keep this unbeaten run going, we need to come from behind to get at least a point. 1-0, but plenty to gain to go. And recently, we have been putting the ball in the back of the net regularly. It's Tyler Adams puts it wide. Man, this is a tough game. It's always the way, isn't it, man? It's always the way. It's like you can go to the Etihad and claim a good result. You can beat your Newcastle United, your Chelsea, your Spurs. With, uh, with solid wins. And then you, you go against one of the uh, the weaker teams in the league and you really struggle to get anything going. Great ball through the Sinistera. Still carrying a knock though. Holds it up well. There is Justin Cliver. And there is the level. I can't lose this one. And the Blades have been leveled. Bournemouth with the level. It is Cliver's first of the year. Oh, do you remember in the last episode? I said that draws are subjective. Sometimes it's a good point. Sometimes it's a bad point. Well, the draw at the Etihad was solid. This was not. Two points dropped no matter how you look at it. Yes, we battled back to claim a point, but really should have been leaving here with all three against Sheffield United. Only a point in the end. It's no losses in five, but this should have been another win. And we see following the game that Radu is going to be recalled by Inter in January, most likely. Totally fine with me. Hasn't played the game. He's not going to get ahead of NATO or Travers ready. And finally, <laughs> after spending the whole summer trying to get him out the door... He's going to leave in January instead. Darren Randolph off to the Hawthorns. Yep, totally fine with that. And so let's move into the first of the month as we see that deal is going to go through. Don't get much money, but again, the most important thing is you get the salary off the books. We're paying 13 grand a week to Darren Randolph, a 36-year-old fourth-choice goalkeeper. But it's just a total waste of money at this point. Uh, three more scouting updates. Let's see what we got. Where from England, Marcus Bailey is going to get a scholarship after two months as he's still looking really solid. And from France, I will give a scholarship to Gillet because while she might notice there is overall doesn't seem the best. I often talk about this as a quick tip for you guys. You'll see his position is listed now as an official CM, but based on his stats here, his dribbling is superb. He's got a bit of pace about him as well, and that means if we convert him to CAM, that will see an overall spike. So if you ever find a youth player who's got good potential but the overall isn't the best, take note of where their position is on the pitch. Chances are they might be playing out of position. If that's the case... Well, it's pretty solid him. If that's the case, you can quickly change the position and uh, you'll see an overall spike for him as well. Another decent play there, Lee Griffith. Continue scouting for now. And from Wales, I think, yeah, we we'll just continue scouting all these guys here and give them one more month. So Academy now is looking like this. Noah Antoine still looking the best, of course. But again, just real briefly on Hugo, as you'll see here. Um, he's come out as a CM, but you look at the stats here. Yeah, I love the high defensive work rate, right? but he's got low strength. He's got low defensive stats mentally and technically as well, which means that that's dragging his overall down. However, if you flip those primary and secondary positions around, CM to CM, you'll see it only take him two weeks to become a CM because that's where he'd be considered best there or on the wing you'll see an overall spike for this guy as soon as that happens right now though yeah I'd say no around Swan still looking our best player plus this Welsh center off as well but it's so frustrating man. whenever I find a giant their potential never lives up to their height unfortunately I think Nicholas Knight is now going to see a bit of a potential downgrade unfortunately oh and how about was the injury for Sinister as well um oh three months after all that time, I totally forgot about that. I totally forgot about that. Sometimes the injury email goes straight in the archive and you miss it. But Louis Sinistera, the classic career mode injury, the broken toe, done for three months. And he, he's been all right since coming in from Leeds. He's got me a couple of goals, a few assists as well. But now I won't see him again until the second half of the season. Right, following game, Champions League chasing Aston Villa at Bournemouth as we go for our sixth game in a row without defeat. And a big bounce back win here in Bournemouth. Come on, you chair. 
I said this year that our absolute ceiling, I mean the highest ceiling we could have, no doubt about it, would be 7th or 6th. And right now we're still in that. We're still in that contention. But this is going to be a big period here. You know the saying, nothing's ever won or lost in December, but a lot of points are, and no doubt about it. With some tough games to come, we could fall away or make a great uh, great run. What's it going to be? A Solanke shot wasn't the best, and Martin has claims to rebound as well. This is a big period of the season for Bournemouth here. Billing to Tav. Nice ball out wide. There is Jack Clark. And with a sinister injury now, he's going to start every game for us as he finds Milos Kirke. It's down left hand side. Solanke make the right runs. He's coming to you. Oh, what a save! That is why he's World Cup winner. That is why he's an Argentine hero. That is why if you walk around Buenos Aires, you'll see a few murals of him like I did last year. He is a, uh, a world-class goalkeeper with Aston Villa. And he's just made an amazing stop there to keep it at 0-0. Jibu with the save. Still goalless here on the south coast. I've seen some people say if Aston Villa don't hold on to a top four place... Um, would Emmy Martinez go for next season? I have to be honest, to me, Martinez feels like one of those sort of players that would stay regardless, do you know what I mean? Because he's so loved by the Aston Villa fans, they absolutely love him. And he's one of those sort of players that just, I don't know how to describe it, it's like no matter how the club's getting on, no matter how they're doing, and even though he probably, well, let's not, let's not say probably, he is good enough to be a Champions League goalkeeper, I, I think he'd still stay. I think he's just so loved at Aston Villa that he would just stay. Moussa Diaby, now at Aston Villa, has just shown his best asset of at the Vitality. Um, yeah, when he gets going, I don't think you're going to catch him. Runs away and drills it into the bomb corner. My goodness, the pace there was ridiculous. Tav to Cliver. Good turn, but... Oh, wow, that is so, that is just so unlucky. As Ollie Watkins makes it, too. that is so unlucky. That's one of those moments there where you just say, do you know what, that's one of those things. I'm a big believer in this, and if you're new viewers to the channel, you'll find this out quickly. It's a saying that I've said for so many years on this channel. It's a bit of a, a dox phrase, if you will. Luck will balance itself out, and it will, and it will, definitely. Throughout the season, you'll get some good luck, and you'll get some bad luck. That is in the latter camp. Deflection straight to Ollie Watkins. The turn allows him to be all alone. And Bournemouth two goals down. Our unbeaten run ending after five by the Champions League chasing Aston Villa. They've torn me apart. Yeah, look good on the offensive end, but defensively we have really, really struggled out there today. And I did say this is exactly what I was expecting, really. Good offensive play, but we're going to concede a lot of goals, I'm sure. As Diaby squeezes it past the Barney on the line. 3-0 Aston Villa and brought back down to earth by Unai Emery's side. Man, it's going to be four as well. Just giving the ball away in a dangerous area. Nicola Zaniola goes all the way off loads. It is indeed four. Oh my goodness. The boos are going to ring around the Vitality because Ollie Watkins' bags are bracing. We've been brought back down to earth and then some humiliated in our own backyard. You know, if this is the level we want to get to, competing not just for a European place, but for a Champions League place. It's safe to say we've got a long way to go. Aston Villa have just taught us a tough lesson. And that lesson is we're a long way off them. Right, following game. Let's just move straight past that and move swiftly on to the next one. Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park. No longer under charge of Roy Hodgson, but Oliver Glasner. I love the appointment as well. Really ambitious from the Eagles. Taking them on. Aiming to bounce back here. Come on, you cherries. To say I did feel a bit sorry for Roy Hodgson. Now, don't get me wrong, Crystal Palace fans. I agree. He, uh, he should have been sacked, and don't get me wrong, I also agree he should have been sacked earlier than he was. He was on borrowed time for a long time, but still wasn't nice, was it, for a man that's been managing for decades, not just years, but decades, to have those banners re um, to, to, be, to be seen in, in full view at, uh, at the Emirates in particular, when there was a great shot of him looking at the banner as well at full time. It was awful. Really, it was horrible to see it, you know, but... Uh, don't don't get me wrong. It's, it's the brutal reality of modern day football, you know. Unfortunately, he uh, he needed to go, and uh, I must say, for Palace, exciting times. I'm a big fan of Glasner. I think he's going to do some great work there as well. As Fiverr makes it 1-1, and we're back on level terms instantly. What a start in South London. Two goals in 33 minutes. I think it's because the manager's been around for so many decades, managing at the top level, both club level and internationally as well. 
Um, you want his sort of managerial career to end in a nice way, don't you? Do you know what I mean? He leads Crystal Palace to a solid 10th place finish or he gets them to an FA Cup final or something. Do you know what I mean? Not reading out banners when you've been absolutely spanked saying it's time to go, you've been there too long or whatever. It's not, it's not a nice way for things to end. You want it to end in a positive note, not where he feels like he's sort of like forced out the door, if you will. Even so, Eduard denied by NATO and still 1-1 here. But the future the future does look quite bright for Palace. Got some really good young talent. And you're going to think an ambitious manager in Oliver Glasner. Winning the Europa League with Frankfurt, of course, a couple of years ago too. I'm excited for what's to come at Selhurst, partnered out about it. They can stay up this year. I do tip them to stay up as well, despite their struggles. I think they can really build on this. And, uh, and, and hopefully, for their sake, trend in a more upward direction, if you will. Well, this is why the Premier League is one of the toughest leagues to win in. Great run of form now brought back down to earth. Two points taken for a possible nine and no wins in our last three either. Yep, Bournemouth were flying high and now they're struggling to get off the ground. And it's not going to get any easier either. Next up, Manchester United away at Old Trafford. It is worth pointing out in real life they won here by three goals to nil. I was there for the game as well. They were magnificent. Let's see if we can replicate that sort of performance and get a big three points here. Come with you, Cherries. Yeah, my brother's a big Manchester United fan, so every now and then when he can't make a game, he'll, uh, he'll offer me his ticket. And um, Yeah, <laughs> let's just say that the uh, last two times I've been to Old Trafford, they failed to win. First a 3-0 loss. And then a 2-2 draw with Spurs. So I don't think I'll be welcome back anytime soon. <laughs> but, um, but no, B Bournemouth, to be fair, were magnificent on that day. But as bad as Manchester United were, to be fair, Bournemouth were excellent. Really, really good. They, they, the funny thing is, they won 3-0. They could have won by more. Could have won by more. Hit the woodwork. Had a uh, goal disallowed, I believe, as well. And as Uttara fires in front, maybe we'll get the same result here as well. First of the season for Django. Bournemouth 1-0 up at Old Trafford. Nine minutes go before the break. Still leading by one. As Cook's free kick is headed on by Edison. Oh! And listen in to you can call Radu. But Getafe, please don't recall any soon. Our first in the league, fifth in all competitions. I put him in for Dominic Solanke. And he's just headed in our second. Lewis Cook just chips the free kick to the middle. And, and this is this is a serious player, man. Honestly, I think he's actually the highest rated player in the team. And whilst it's hard to get him in the team at the expense of Dominic Solanke, he'll get the rare league start here and there. And he's just taken his first in the league as well. It's 2-0 right before the break. And, well, feels like deja vu. To say we played some good football out there and looked absolutely solid defensively as well. Manchester United have not had an answer for this Bournemouth performance. Leading by two. Way winning climber. And with 22 minutes to go. I, I would say there's going to be a third goal in this game. It's not going to be a lifeline for the Red Devils. It's going to be a dagger for Bournemouth. We have absolutely played them off the park here. Where have I seen this before? As we still lead by two. Oh, still lead by two at Old Trafford. Zuatara takes a tumble and stays down as well. Got his first goal of the season. And now goes down with an injury. And I think that might be an injury like the Sinistera one that will rule him out for quite a long period of time. Back to his feet now, though, as we still lead by two. Yep, it might not be a 3-0 win, but a 2-0 win. And just like in real life, the Cherries come to Old Trafford and leave with a comfortable victory. That's our first away day win in the league this season, I believe, as well. And what a performance to go along with it as well. Ah, talk about deja vu, man. That was incredible. And in the end, the injury to a tyre was just a five-day bruise. And before our following game at home to Luton, sure, briefly, we discussed this earlier, uh, Hugo Gille going to change the position and you see him jump up four ratings to 60 overall. So yeah, just a, a brief tip. You see a youth player that looks really solid, but the overall is low. Take note of the position. If he's playing out of position, put him in your academy anyway. You change that position quickly with the development plan, you'll see a big overall spike. Right, yeah, uh, following game, Luton Town at home as we go for back-to-back wins to try and stay in the top 10 and go on a nice run to close out the first half of the season and the calendar year of 2023 as well. Come on, you cherries. You just cannot predict Bournemouth's form right now, man. It's crazy. I mean, we literally... I've picked up four scouts already this year. Chelsea, Spurs, Manchester United. And I'm going to include Newcastle in that as well. Why not? They're a, uh, well, they were a Champions League team for this season. So why not include Newcastle as a scout as well? Plus, we've got a great point in the Etihad. We were leading for a long time as well. Why not have won? But a draw is still a solid result away at the Champions. This is the problem, though. Like, this is the problem. If you want to be a European team, 
you have to win your bankers and, and most crucially you have to win multiple in a row you know it's all well and good pick up a big win here and there but if you can't win consistently you're not going to qualify for a european place I say it all the time it's one of my favorite sayings consistency is king if you want to do anything significant you've got to perform consistently not just every now and then well, we have just won ourselves a free kick right on the edge in the final minute of normal time. I'm going to give it to Enesuna, who I've just brought off the bench. Pretty much, I'll be honest here, specifically for this free kick. If I can get it up and over that wall and into that top corner, well, let's just say this. Katafe, name your price. It's the Turkish forward. It hits it into the wall. And that is probably... Gonna do it. And he almost scored a screamer from range as well. Goal is Jordo, and no matter how you look at it, it's a disappointing point. Back to back clean sheets is nice after struggling defensively, but really should have won that game there. Dis disappointing slip up, two points dropped. And just before that following game against Nottingham Forest in form right now in the save, uh, we do see two players out of contract that can leave on pre-contracts. Uh, Ryan Fredericks, who I was totally fine letting go of anyway, but also Lloyd Kelly. I, th I think I'll let that go through. As things stand at the point I'm recording this commentary, it's basically a cert that he's going to leave on a free transfer to a, uh, to a bigger European club. So with that being the case... I'm going to keep it realistic, and whilst I really like him a lot, I'm, uh, I'm going to let him go and test the waters in free agency. Right, uh, following game, Nottingham Forest at home, and to be fair, back-to-back -back clean sheets, no losses in our last three. Let's see if we can keep it going here, away at the City ground. Come on, you cherries. Ryan Yates to Giovanni Reina, Ibrahim Sangare gives it him back, and the American, oh, what a turn. What a turn for the American. And the ex-Dortmund man fires Nottingham Forest in front. Son of an icon, Claudio. And he looked like Claudio Reina out there. And Ibrox, wonderful little turn, wonderful little finish. And Nottingham Forest have the lead. They're in form right now at this point in the save. Nuno's got them playing. They're 1-0 up. Yeah, there's a real blast from the past. Claudio Reina at Rangers. And I tell you what, a lot, you know, a lot of people will debate where he was at his best, the, uh, the American icon. In my opinion, it wasn't Ibrox, in my opinion. I, I know he had some good years at Man City, a couple of years with Sunderland, but... Oh, what a save, Matt Turner. Speaking of Americans, I think he was at his best when he was with uh, Glasgow Rangers. Great save on Matt Turner's, and the Americans have turned up here in Nottingham. First, we were a big, a big goal, and then we were a big save as we're still down by one. This will be another disappointing result, and, well, unfortunately, just one win in our last six. We can fail to turn this round. Yeah, well, that would have. have. Solanke, Scott. Tav off the bench, great save by Matt Turner, as we're still tied at 1-1, pushing for a for a leveller, as I'm going to Tav, we know his whipped deliveries are so strong, as his cross finds Billing, and Philip Billing gives us the level, he's so, so good, because he's just so tall and so strong, so if you aim for him on set pieces, you know he's quite likely to win the aerial duel. Tav's cross, look at that. He's got four red shirts around him, and he still comes out on top. The Great Dane heads in the level. Is that his third of the year? Well, this is first today, and it's 1-1. He's so good, because he just he doesn't lose aerial duels. Once again, wins it back with the height. Cliver to Aarons, gives it him back. There's Solanke. There's Alex Scott, saved by Turner. And put behind for a corner. But once again, we're looking for that same duo. Give it to Tav. We know his deliveries are excellent. Especially these in-swingers. Looking for the Great Dane in the middle. Is it going to be deja vu? Is it a carbon copy? It is! Matt Turner coin, no man's land. And Philip Billing doubles up. Carbon copy in Nottingham. Boom have come from behind to lead. Why mess with a winning formula twice in a row? That works out perfectly. Um, Bournemouth are going to come from behind to claim our second away day victory. And two on the trot as well at the city ground against Inform Forest here. Courtesy of a Philip Billing brace and a Dominic Solanke dagger. Solanke drills it home off the bench to make it 3-1. Game over. Good night, Forest. What a comeback victory in Nottingham.
Yeah, and it's a crop of Bournemouth players that I really don't believe will be here for much longer than just the one year. Philip Billing, the Great Dane, is one of those players in a prime of his career at 27 years old, but four goals and an assist in 17 games, not to mention having a hand in those five clean sheets as well. He might not be growing much now, but his stats are sublime, and he gets the height that makes him so valuable to any team. Right, following game, uh, Boxing Day, match day 19, after this will be the official halfway stage, Fulham, where a win could put us in to the top seven and a European place. That's a late Christmas present I want. Let's see if we can get it. Come with you, Charis. Traore, oh, with a ball, and Willian fires in the open. Wow, nine minutes in, and we're already a goal down here on the south coast. My goodness. Um, yeah, I, you know, honestly, I, I don't see why we can't finish in the European place. Oh, my goodness, this is awful. That's got to be a straight red. That was terrible from Calvin Bassi, and that is just silly. Awful, absolutely awful tackle. That is one of those where, oh, that is late. That is reckless. That's from behind. That's... That's awful. That, that is, seriously, that is like a several game ban kind of tackle that. Um, Premier League has just got so strong. I mean, it's always been strong. It's got so strong over the years to the point where the traditional big six are always a threat. But then with the newcomers, you know, your, your, your Newcastle United, your Aston Villas, your Brightons, West Ham as well. And then there's always like one team that kind of stuns everyone. as like a really great season as well. Fulham right now in a great season. Palace are in a great season. In the same, I should say. To stay where we are is going to take some doing in this second half of the season. But we can get back on level terms here. Oh, win this game. Which we should now, even from a trading position. Why not? Gotta win that, win that, win that. Well in. And Semenya, that's such great hold up playing. Look at the space for Solanke to run into here. Full of a man lights. This is going to happen now. We're going to find space. And that's great. Oh, it's brilliant from Dom. And Romain should have made it 1-1. I've just spurned two golden chances. Solanke looking brilliant out there. Can't say the same about my finishing. Still down by one. Half an hour in. Surely we can't lose this game. We've got a whole hour to play to turn this game on its head. Got to do that. Corner to the middle. Jimenez flicks on. And Solanke does well. And... You know, when we get the ball back, we've got to push the pace, man. Not only have we got pace, but we've got space as well. With Fulham down the tail. We just need to hold it up, play the right through balls. And Philip Billing continues his sensational run of form. Three goals in two for the Great Dane. And finally, Bournemouth have got their level up. Whole half to play. Now let's find a winner. Traore using that big body of his, but the pass is poor. And we'll get it back. Semenyo to remain. Now Tyler, great chance here again for a breakaway and all the space as Solanke beats Yao Polina. It's got to be, it is, Bournemouth in front for the first time in the comeback complete. We had all the time in the world to do this and in the end, flex them on big man, we get it done. 2-1, these points are surely ours. It's going to be back-to-back -back wins and three wins in the four and no losses in five as well. Bournemouth finally starting to click. Six minutes to go. Can we close this out? Man advantage. We really shouldn't throw it away from here. It's yes, well in Metham. And now look at the red and black shirts coming forward. Because look at the space. Look at the urgency in the air. We'll just slow it down. That's wise. There's base out wide for Kirkes as well. Semenyo for the dagger. Took it on early. Oh, but it doesn't matter whether we do or don't. Because Antoine Semenyo's first of the year is a rocket. Game over. 3-1, back-to-back wins with the same scoreline, and I think that is going to put Bournemouth in a European place at the halfway stage of the season. Whole other half of the season to go, but this has been a great way to close out the winter period. Yep, we are indeed in a European place at the halfway stage of the season, but there's a whole other half to play, so taking nothing for granted. Man City on top of the tree right now, shot Coral Liverpool and Arsenal in second and third. Crystal Palace, what a season they're having right now in fourth. Two clearer Spurs and us in sixth as well. So, if the season was to end now, we'd qualify for the Europa League. Oh, I said sick was probably the absolute max highest ceiling we've got. Well, right now, that's exactly where we're at. We're stuck to the ceiling, not Spider-Man. Uh, Chelsea, Forest, Everton and Fulham wrap up the top 10 with the bottom half seeing Newcastle United in particular, Manchester United having shocking seasons. The latter in 16th place and only four off the bottom three where Brentford, Burnley and Sheffield United occupy those relegation spots. And in the individual charts, you see Foden is leading the way in the race to the Golden Boot. What a season he's having in real life. And in the same 
save, it seems, as well. 13 and 19 with Madison and Watkins right behind. Saka and Diaz wrapping up the top five. We do have Solanke in the top 15 with seven in 17, so that's nice to see as well. And on the assist charts right now, Corley Woodrow is leading the way in the race. His assist title, Tav, is in there as well. Five in 17, I'd wager that at least three or four of them have come from corners as well. Sinistera is also in the top 20 as well, which is nice to see. And as to the Golden Glove race, Jordan Pickford is one clear of our lad NATO and Aaron Ramsdale with 7 in 19 leading the way in the race for the Golden Glove. Right, following game, final one of December. Let's see if we make it no losses in six and three wins on the trot as well. Come on, you cherries. Yeah, no scalp. Would be great here away against Spurs too. That will be a back-to-back uh, -back season victories over Tottenham. And I often say, you know, if you've done it before, you can do it again. If we've beaten them before, we can beat them again. What a save by Vicario. Flag stayed down. I thought Solanke was a mile offside there. And I probably should have finished it off as well. Still deadlocked at nil-nil. But a fast and encouraging start. Just what we want. Kerkez down the line for Clark. Romero to beat. And the ex-Black Cat does really well. It's the former... Oh, what a ball! Oh, what a ball! He's just said Spurs. This is why you shouldn't have sold me. A few years in Tottenham never worked out for him. Left permanently to Sunderland. And he's just delivered the assist of the season. Never mind Corley Woodrow. This guy should be top of the charts for that assist alone. What a delivery. And Alex Scott heads in his first for the club as well. It's the lad signed from the championship showing there's talent outside the Premier League. His first in Bournemouth Colours, one up in North London. He's so good. He is so, so good, Jack Clark. And I know, Sunderland fans, it'll be painful to watch him go in the summer if that is to happen, which is looking quite likely right now. But, oh, Hyung Min Son sneaks in the near poster. I thought it jockeyed perfectly, but NATO, I'm not sure he should have been beaten there, the skipper, but he was, and it's 1-1. I'd love to see if he's just as good in real life in the Premier League as he is for us, man. He's been sublime, but... There we go, Spurs back on level terms, Son with the goal, but I really think Nathan should have kept it out, really. Near post, didn't strike it too cleanly, just got his angles wrong. Is there going to be a, uh, a late winner into the final 15 minutes of normal time? And, oh, it's been a tough one for Solanke, but that's a great tackle by Senesi. And I think he might just have to settle for a point. That Brighton game, you see in the top left there is the FA Cup, by the way, FA Cup third round. And after being knocked out by the, uh, by the Bees in the Carabao Cup, I don't think we'll get through that game against Brighton as well. It means if we are to qualify for Europe this year, we'll need to come through a league position. As Basuma rolls through, Kudasevsky, out comes NATO. He's put him on the floor. Basuma shot blocked by Sinesi. He's going to get there again, no, but he doesn't. And Madison heads in the goal to put Spurs in front. And I don't think this is going to happen either. There's just too many good teams to compete with in the Premier League, man. The traditional big six, and a grant in Manchester United are having a really off year, and Newcastle aren't doing too well either, but Crystal Palace are right now in the top four. So that should kind of sum up how difficult it's going to be for us to stay in a top seven place, let alone top six. Spurs come from behind to lead late, and I think... Oh, no, I think that's going to do it. We want to take Bournemouth into Europe. We want to make them a European side at some point. But right now, it's it's just, I'd say, probably one step too far. Top 10, absolutely. This is a really good team with some great young talent. But to be in a top 7 position... Oh, what on earth is... <laughs> What's Rashad Leeson doing? What are they sat on? They're in purgatory. What? <laughs> What is that? So it turns out if you're not good enough for heaven and you're not bad enough for hell, you end up in purgatory. The location is actually North London. Who you would have thought? Right, uh, so here we go then. It is the... Uh, oh, what? Why have you recalled any zoo now? Getafe, what? Come on. Lack of playing time. You're having a laugh, mate. You got your six goals, I think. That's a joke. But anyway, January is here. I don't want Radu being recalled. He hasn't played a minute, but any soon now, really? January is here. Randolph's gone as well. So three players have left, but two of which are backup goalkeepers. And we've got three more scouts. That's, that's really annoying, that. 
Now, I'm all for recalling Radu, but that's ridiculous, man. Uh, we'll continue scouting on these three English players and see how they look after another month. As for France, this guy is still looking really good. So might give him a scholarship. Yanis Roo, or give him one, one, one more month. One more month, we'll see how he looks after that. Uh, not a great batch this month, unfortunately, as we'll continue scouting on these two Welsh lads, who, to be fair, do look pretty decent, so might give him a scholarship next month. But right now, the academy looking like this. Any potential downgrades? Not so much, as uh, the best still remains Noah Antoine, who looks absolutely fantastic. Really, really solid indeed. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm just thinking Franck Ribéry. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'll tell you what, if he's half a player at the front, Ribery was in his prime. I'll definitely take that. And so we've had a Nicholas Knight as well. He's still looking really solid. That giant centre half. I'm liking the look of him a lot. So yeah, January is here. Um, that's gutting about Unaldo, man. He was a great stand-in for Solanke. Now he's gone. Uh, the Randolph deal means we don't we don't really get much money added to the budget. So I doubt we'll do any moves here in January. But the real question is, will Lloyd Kelly leave or not? Well, I guess we shall find out in time. Um... Okay, I already knew that. Let's uh, let's let's get to the uh, the Brighton game in the FA Cup third round. And uh, oh, bid from Wolves for Uatara. Gary O'Neill worked with him. I'm not actually against that to be honest. There, I really like him as a young player. Um, it's just hard to get all my pieces to game time. You know, Justin Cliver, Romain, uh, Marcus Tavernier, Jack Clark, who's coming as well. So someone will probably have to go. And if it was to be someone, I mean, probably would be Uatara at this point, right? Um, Gary O'Neill has worked with him as well. Do you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Let's jump into the... Uh, let's make this our final game today, to be fair. FA Cup third round as we try and bounce back here and make it into the last 32 of the FA Cup. Roberto De Zerbi side away at the Amex. Let's try and pull off a cup set here and make it through to the last 32. Come on, you cherries. It's been a tough first half. They're still deadlocked at 0-0. You know, the one thing we don't want is a cup replay. So new viewers to the channel, you'll learn this quickly. I cannot stand cut replays. I disdain them with a passion. And there are so many things in life I've changed my mind on. And I think it's a good thing when you get proved wrong or you do have a change of heart on something. It shows you're tangible as a person. And it's good to think about things from a different perspective. But the one thing I don't think I'll ever change my mind on, I never have and I probably never will, I've been very consistent with this, is that cup replays should be done away with. It's amazing when a non-league side grabs a draw against a football league team and gets to take them back home to their little makeshift stadium with their makeshift temporary stands. It's great. It's awesome. It's great to get the TV money. It can be a great source of additional revenue as well. But... It's a rarity, and it's not worth an extra game in the calendar, in my opinion. Not in modern day football. There are too many games, scrap cut replays. But I don't think we'll be having one in this one here. Up by a goal to break, and right now, feeling quite comfortable. I think, if, if nothing else, like, at least scrap them for another round as well. Okay, sure, keep, keep them for the first round, keep them for the second round. But, uh, like, they, the FA now have done away, away with them in the last 16 onwards. So in recent years now, um, for those that might not follow English football too closely, FA Cup, from, from the last 16 onwards, there is no replay. What a great touch and finish that is. So they've done away with replays from the last 16 onwards, but not for the rounds prior. And I understand why that is. Because the, the smaller teams, you know, your non-league teams or your deep football league teams, don't tend to go that deep in the competition. But they don't normally get to like the third round or the fourth round either. Well, obviously the, the football league side's doing the third round. But even so, in that case, scrap scrap them from the from the fourth round as well. Not just the fifth round, but the fourth round too. Even so, one one here. And as things stand, we are set for a replay. But as Clark finds Solanke, we might get ourselves back in front here. Dominic just couldn't control. And SDP now gets it back to Jason Steele. Come on, tw 24 minutes to avoid the dreaded replay. Well back through the gap. Zabani should get it out. Oh, how has that gone in? Billy Kilmore just put Brian in front. How, how has that gone in, though? I just tried to cut the ball out. And I think it just deflected off his shins and, and passed NATO. Well, he's claiming it. He deserves to claim it. But I want to see that on the replay because I thought I cut it out with Zabani. And oh, my goodness gracious me. Pinball in the Bournemouth area. It's pinged into the top corner, but I don't actually know who's got the final touch on that. Brighton are in front, Gilmore's claiming it, and the turnaround's complete on the south coast. It's going to be back-to-back -back losses for Bournemouth, and there was me bemoaning the cup replays, but in the end, we're not going to have one. 
And we're not going to have another game in the cup this year either. We're going out. Yeah, a bit of a bizarre way to lose the game, but lose it we do. And we are out of the FA Cup in the first round we enter. So no chance of winning silverware this year. And if we want to be a European team like these guys as well, then we cannot have form like this. Back-to-back -back losses and back-to-back -back games where we led but still end up on the losing team. Lessons learned, we are not at this level just yet. But that will do it for today's episode of the Realistic Crimmer, guys. So a big fan of which you enjoyed it. If you have done, please do drop a like. And much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode with more big games in the second half of the season, trying to get back in the European place and more transfers, I'm sure, as well. Have a great day. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.